God bless us all. God bless you. Out of Asha, his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. Verse 21. Napali is a hindlet loose. He giveth goodly words. Asher is the eighth son of the patriarch Jacob. And of course, we know that Asher is the younger son or the younger brother of God. These two being the sons of Zilpah, the handmaid of Leah. The name Asher means happy, blessed, and fortunate. Asher had four sons and one daughter. They were born unto him in Canaan, and they migrated with him unto Egypt, with his descendants remaining there unto the Exodus. By the days of the Exodus wanderings, the number of Asher numbered six different clans, numbering 41,500 fighting men. Asher was given a geographical location in the land that would provide great advantage to him in times or in terms of trade. And so as Jacob stood to bless his son for the final time, in seeing what was to befall him in days come, he said unto Asher, Asher, his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. The bread here speaks of his substance, and the term fat carries the idea of plenty. And so he said to Asher, that that which will pertain to you shall be plentiful. Another word that is used in the Hebrew to supplement or to bring out the meaning of the word plenty is the word fat or greasy. You know, you see some people, you say to them, boy, life is treating you so well. You're fat till you're shy. The Hebrew word literally means to greasy. It means that your skin is tight because you are full on the inside. And so you find that Asher would actually be given a high standard of living and he would be given pleasant circumstances. When you consider Asher, Asher would be the one that God would favor with opportunity. And Asher would make use of that opportunity. The man Asher or his tribe would be of such that whatever God presented to them, that they would take advantage of it. And when they took advantage of it, God ensured that what they put their hand to it prospered. And so Asher began to prosper in the land. Not only did they experience expand in numbers not only did they expand in their geographical possession their geographical location but they they expanded in their very cloud because it was the, the, the people of Asha that would bring onto the king's palace those goods and services that they needed in other words if you look at the history of Asha when King Solomon established himself, he had 12 district governors over all Israel who supplied provision for the king and the royal household. Each one of them would provide supplies for one month in the year. Asha, my God, this rich tribe was one of those who provided for King Solomon. 
In other words, whatever they did was of such quality that it could have been provided and produced before the king. What do we learn about Asha as we look at our own congregation? There are people sitting before me that God has blessed and kissed with potential. All you need is an opportunity and God will raise you up. There are individuals in this place that God has rested a particular favor upon that what you put your hand to, it shall prosper. Can I tell you that within the body of Christ, there are some people who are ashes in their own right and they have been earmarked. They have been set up. They have been established to be blessed. It may not happen immediately. It may not happen tomorrow. But as you continue and God provides opportunity, you are going to learn that the blessings of God are yea and amen. You may be questioning him now because you are anxious. But can I tell you, you shall learn that lesson that so many before have learned that God is not a man that he should lie, not the son of man that he should repent. Every promise that God has made unto Asha, it shall come to pass. Can I tell you that the Lord God's word, it shall not return unto him boy, but it shall accomplish what it has been sent unto. But if God has blessed me as Asha, why am I suffering this way? One of the things that I said to a group of persons the other day, and I want to say it here, when God has called you to anything, when God has blessed you with anything, when God has prophesied anything over you, shut your mouth. You need to understand that when God says something over you, it has a particular process that it follows. Behold, Samuel, get thee down to the house of Jesse, for here I have provided a king among his sons. In other words, he made a provision. His provision has already been made. He looked down in temple hall and he says, I have made a provision for particular persons. But when the provision is made, don't get all up in yourself and let the flesh take a hold of you. And you begin to do all kind of foolishness and get on top of people's nerves. Because after the procession, after God has made that, there is a process. I am sick and tired of people making food out of themselves because they don't know that after the provision there is a process. God does not give children and impure people power to do mighty things. And so God will take David ah, and boil him to the backside of the desert. And David had the right attitude because when he sat in the presence of Saul, he knew how to behave himself, he knew how to humble himself, he knew how to set himself that Saul had nothing against him. And then he would take David, set him to the backside of the wilderness where David would learn how to cry. When David ran from Saul and sat in the darkness of the wilderness of Judea and lifted up his eyes unto Jehovah, he said, The Lord is my life light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? It took God 17 years to rub off the roughness of David, to make him look like a king, to teach him how to lead men, to teach him how to strategize, to teach him how to be a godly ruler. And after the process was done, God promoted him. If you promote yourself, you are headed for a fall. Any day that you get a prophecy and you're told in that you're going to fall upon it. Why is God saying this? Because many of Asha is going to lose their way. 24 years ago, a man wrote a prophecy over my life. It was one of the prophecies that people like to hear. 
You can't be this, you can't do that, you can't. But there was a cave at the diplomacy. He says there are some hills you're gonna have to come over. There are some struggles you're gonna have to go through. There are some beats you're gonna have to take. Here I am 24 years later. Better for it. Because within the provision, there is a process. And after the process comes the promotion. What God is doing, Asher, in your life, He is preparing you for what you need to do and what you need to be. When I started to drive for JUTC, they took us and they brought us into training. They said, forget everything that you remember or you think you know. Because when you begin to drive, you are carrying four or five people in your vehicle. And you're driving a vehicle that weighs 2,000 pounds. And you think you're a big driver. They said, the vehicle you're going to drive is 25 pounds. And it's going to carry 50 or 60 or people. We have to prepare you for that. In other words, when the provision comes, you are still driving little things. But it's going to take God a while to process you, to make you who he wants you to be, to rub our flesh, to rub our selfishness. And when you are done, he will raise you up and anoint you for service because you have gone through the pit, you have done the race, you have gone through the process, and God is ready for you. Not before time. Asha is full of potential. But unless Asha play by the rules, Asha can fall. Hear the word of the Lord and you're going to see where I'm going. Asha is a rich tribe. They are favored with opportunity. They are favored with fortune. They are favored. Hear what Moses said of Asher. This is our favor wherever they are. In Deuteronomy 33, 24, he says, May Asher be blessed above other sons. May he be esteemed by his brothers. May he bathe his feet in oil. In other words, Moses is prophesying that the tribe of Asher would be the most blessed and favored tribe among his brothers. May his feet be blessed and bathed in oil. And may his children go in strength and in number. Potential unfulfilled is the greatest tragedy of all. Listen carefully. In 2010, one pastorate, I was chosen to be the national youth director. And when I was selected, it caused an uproar because where did the Kuwanya come from? We never saw him. We never endorsed him cause a problem. But you know what I found? Is that during that period of time, I got to be places that I had no business being. I got to meet people I had no business meeting. To go to the Governor General's residence as the youth leader for the Church of God. To meet with those in Cleveland, Tennessee as the youth leader for, for the Church of God. But you know what it taught me? When I sat in the presence of the bishop, the high-ranking men, I never brushed their shoulder like we are body body. I learned how to behave myself and walk for myself, darling. The process did that to me. Process. It allows you to manage what you have and what God will give you. Glory begins to rest on your shoulder like him. The word glory, come on, it means weight. When weight begins to rest on you, you have to have the internal disposition to manage it. Or else you become proud and heavy and full of flesh. Asha has potential. And don't worry, I'm done in 10 minutes. But there's a problem that occurred with Asha that many people do not know. If you read the scripture, you find that Asha did not have great commitment to the Lord. Thank you so much, my love. Asha did not have great commitment to the Lord. In the days of Hezekiah, some did not respond to his call to return to the worship of the Lord. 
there's a clear indication that the tribe had moved away from the Lord, from the majesty of God, and the majority of them scorned the few little ones who continued to go to Jerusalem to worship. The danger with becoming that which God desires is that if you're not careful, if you're not trained properly, if you're not ready, your flesh takes over. And when flesh takes over, it must come to an end. Asha, according to the scripture, they compromise with the religion of the people round about them. Ah, can I tell you that only a small remnant of people of the tribe of Asher remain faithful. Ah, I'll tell you this, that Asher was one of the richest tribes, but they were not rich towards God. It got to their head, and all of a sudden the worship of Yahweh was not important enough. Let me warn those of you who are hearing me today. Ah, you have a desire to have things and be rich. Nothing wrong with that. But remember, remember the Lord your God. He formed them that when I bring you into the land that I promise you, when I take you across the Jordan, when I bring you across Gilgal, when I throw down Jericho before you, when I call you to stand up in places you have no business in, and when I exalt and exhale you, remember! Remember. And that's why the process is so important that as he sets you up for where he's sending you that you are not easily moved and swayed by every wind of doctrine and by every opportunity that presents itself and so you find that in Asha the people fell away but what gives me great hope is the fact that God always has a red man there are some people no matter how much money you give them they now turn them back from God it doesn't matter how much opportunity you give them, they're not turning their back on God. They are going to serve Him whether they have food to eat or not. They are going to serve Him whether they have money or not. They are going to serve Him whether they have clothes to put on, yes or no. Whether they are happy or sad, they are going to serve Him. There are some people who are like that. And God said, Asha, I will cause your very life to be fruitful. What gives me hope? is that in this time Asha was able to be a part of the Christ story Hannah or Anna in Luke 2 who blessed the child that Mary had in her arms and spoke of him as being the Messiah was from the tribe of Asha so Asha is a compromising tribe but there is always a remnant then there is not Pali the son that was born to Rachel via Bilhah. Hear what Jacob says of his son. Napali is a hind let loose. In other words, is a good to get wet. He giveth goodly words. Now the hind is a female deer. It's not a man, you know. The man is called the heart. The woman is called the hind. So he is like a young frisky girl. That's the idea. Hard to control. Unpredictable. And they are fleet of foot. What was the thing about Naptali? You're going to recognize that Naptali got the best lot, even better than Asha in the land. But the problem with Naptali was that unlike Asha, Naptali had no discipline. Napali had no discipline. What do I mean? Unlike the ox and the ass that labor and they literally give themselves unto the work and they yoke themselves to the plow. Napali is not like that. Napali is not focused. He has opportunity, but he's not disciplined. Has opportunity, but not disciplined. Most of our churches do not suffer from a lack of talent, you know, from a lack of gifting. It suffers from a lack of discipline. Most of our people never get to where they are to go because they lack discipline. The discipline to put their shoulder to the wheel, 
and to have the work done. Naphtali, can I share, is one with potential but is an underachiever. This one desires ease and liberty. Very active but is known for quick dispatch and steady labor but not steady labor and perseverance. Let me see if I can wrap this up in a nutshell because I told you I only had 10 minutes. The fastest land animal is the cheetah. That's the fastest land animal. The cheetah can run up to speed of 70 miles per hour. 70 miles per hour, you see, is actually the limit on the toll road. It's 112 kilometers. And the cheetah can run that fast. The problem with the cheetah is that while it is fast, it has no discipline, no stamina. So whatever it is running down, if that particular animal can get to probably one mile before it is caught, the cheetah will not catch it. The cheetah does not have that stamina as much as it is fast. But there's a thing that we have called the wolf. You know the wolf? We're walking a pack. They are not as fast as the cheetah, but they will track a prey for days. They will run it down, each going to the head because they are working packs. So with one tire and another go, but none of them stop because what? They have perseverance as to what they are going to do. Naphtali is that bright cheetah who will give you a quick sprint, but when the storm rises up and you look for Naphtali, you don't find it, you don't find it, you don't find it. Naphtali is the man when things get hot at church, he disappear for a while, then after three months you see him back. Now, Pali is the kind of person you cannot depend on. So why Asha compromises his faith? Now, Pali compromises his potential. He gives himself no responsibility. If he cannot get early glory, he's not taking anything and leaving. I'm closing. Nobody no, 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 no. But here, how Naphtali makes his way. If you look at what Jacob says about him, he says not only is he a high head loose for those who are following the text, but he giveth goodly words. You see that there? Do you know what it means? It means that he's a good speaker. He was a salesman. He was a sunfire man. If he can't be into anything, he must sell insurance. When insurance man done with you, you want to help get your money out of your pocket. Naphtali is a skilled speaker, so he doesn't do the work, but he convinces you very well. He's almost a skill. He speaks a good game, but he cannot fight the good fight. He talks well, but doesn't have the stamina. Moses said of Naphtali, he says that the Lord's favor shall be upon him in abundance. The blessing because of the land that he was given, not because of the work that he put in. I want to say to the church of God today that God is going to raise up some of us like Asher. But I warn you solemnly this 19th day of May, when the Lord raises you up, do not forget the Lord your God. For those who are going through the process, for God's sake, humble yourself and let the word teach you. Stay under the process and let the Holy Ghost lead you. To those who may be like Natali, full of potential, always getting a break, no work for anything but get your race up and lift it up, I encourage you, cultivate a spirit of discipline that at the ending of the day, you will be at a place where your full potential can be exposed. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to stand with me. And we're going to pray. We want to pray for our people today. 
Why? Because what we are looking for is a change on people's inside. It's a change wherein as, as a, a son of Asha, I will give my best potential and when God has blessed me through hard work, I will not turn around and walk and leave the place where he used to bless me. Like an Napali, I will not continue to gin out myself. Be not deceived by his mama. But I will develop a spirit of discipline to bring forth excellence that whatever I do, God can be well pleased in it. Jesus King, me There's a precious fountain.
say to people, cheer up. But every heart knows it won't sorrow. For those who have come to this altar, I want those of us who are in the pews to pray sincerely for them. They have stepped to this altar because there's a need they have that only God can fulfill. And I am believing God for miracles. Every time I take this mic, I don't believe I'm wasting my time. I am believing God for miracles in Temple Hall. I am believing for testimonies in Temple Hall. And I'm trusting God that whatever drought is trying to attach itself to Temple Hall. Right now, we rebuke it because the people of God must prosper. They must prosper. Hallelujah. The people of God must prosper. I want everyone every year to bow your head with me. We're going to pray for our people. And I want also to remember to pray for the church of God. We're going through choppy waters, you know. We're going through choppy waters. But one of the things that I know, having been in the church of God for a while, is that this is not the first time that our ship has come upon storms. But the God that we serve, the God that we serve is able to navigate us. But when the storm gets too rough, he'll drop the anchor and he will hold within the veil. The church of God, she may stumble, but she will never fall because she belongs to God. She may stumble, but she will never fall. She belongs to God. And these who are on the altar are a part of this great heritage. And we believe that the things that come with being a part of this heritage is theirs also. Bow your heads, everyone, everywhere. We just got a prayer request from Latoy Wesley. So we're going to be praying for her as well. Amen. Heavenly Father, we stop at this time, Lord God, to honor you, to bless your name, and to praise you. You are our mighty warrior. You are the God who is mighty in battle. If you, O oh Lord, were not ahead of us, where would we be? The floods of old would have swallowed us up. The enemy would have come in with the death strike. But Lord, you blocked up many a stuff in the heavenlies and you protected your people. This day, Lord God, we speak of the testament of your goodness to us. And Lord God, we know that you are around us to protect us and to guide your children who stand on this altar. Many have come time and time again to receive, oh God, a new day in their lives. But Almighty God, the process is on in earnest and they sometimes get weak under the process. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray God that strength will come to every knee that is feeble. To every feet, oh God, that feel like falling. To every hand that can no longer hold the neck of the enemy. I pray for strength, almighty God, to keep such a one on the firing line. Mighty God of Daniel, we declare this day that no weapon formed against your people shall prosper. And every tongue that rise against them shall be condemned in judgment. Let the heritage of them that serve you, Lord God, rest upon your people. Lord, I pray for the warrior who has become bogged down in the battle. Oh God, I pray, Lord God, for the warrior who the enemy has tied the feet, has tied the hand, and has blindfolded the eyes. I pray for the warrior that is seeking to be delivered from a state of defeat in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the warrior of heaven rest upon such a one. Raise them up in might and in power. Break the fetters. Tear down the barricades. Arm them with the blood of Jesus. And let your people do exploits. Oh God, I pray for such a 
one, that warrior, raise him up again in the power and into anointing. Lord God, we remove all of the hindrances. We seek in the heavenlies. We declare and push up every dark cloud. And we pray that your light will shine upon that warrior. Oh God, to come back to a place where they are able, Almighty God, oh, yeah, 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 to war in the heavenlies again. We set you free. By the word of the Lord, we cut the ropes. By the word of the Lord, we break the chains. By the word of the Lord, we release you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We release you into a new anointing. By the word of the Lord our God. Father, today, as your people have come to this altar, all are in need. All are in need of something from your hand. I pray now, Almighty God, that you will do it again and give unto them a blessing. Father, breathe on them and let deliverance come. Lord, I pray that this very altar will be the place where they testify that you have come through for them. We pray for Sister Wesley, oh God, who has called for special prayer. Wherever she is now, I ask you, Lord, to dispatch angels to surround her. I ask you, Lord God, to send the warring angel, defend her. Mighty God, breathe upon her right now. And every enemy that may be in her vicinity, I pray God will cause them to fall. Hide her under the cloud by day. Hide her by the fire by night. And let the enemy have no recourse. But in the name of Jesus Christ, we push back against him. And we declare that she shall be well. And all shall be well. Father, cover the blessed church of God in Temple Hall. Let your blood be upon this place that when the enemy sees it, he must pass over. I pray God, you rise up every warrior in Temple Hall again. Rise up every prayer warrior. Rise up every warrior in the spirit. Rise up your people to find the good fight and to bring us back to a place of victory. I pray today that the old ship of Zion will sail again Oh God, rest upon us, sit down upon us. Oh. God Almighty, let Holy Spirit sit upon His creation as He sat upon the unborn world. Father, I pray for every individual today who came in with a need that as they go, they go, Lord, in faith, knowing that you have heard and that you have delivered. Even now, Lord God, I pray a blessing on every person who needs your hand of intervention today. And I pray that every need they have will be taken care of. Those who came for salvation, I pray, Lord God, you'll open their hearts and their minds and allow, oh God, in a very special way them to come to know you. They are halting on two opinions. And I pray God for a decision to serve you. Give a new revelation to them. And allow them to understand that you are God. Father, we consecrate this bottle of olive oil to your glory. We dedicate it to your use and to your use only. Wherever it is applied, I pray your Holy Spirit will be pleased, O oh God, to act as your people applied in faith. And I pray, Lord God, that for no other use must it be considered but for holy usage. And so, Lord God, we pray right now that you breathe upon it as we present it dedicated to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Father, I ask of you to bless your people abundantly and cause, O oh God, your people like Asha. Oh God, to be pleasant, to have, to have plenty, Lord God, to prosper and to do well. For the ashes of mamas, I pray in discipline that God will be able, like Elisha, after he followed after Elijah, to split the water in two because of his discipline. Even now, Lord, raise up your people for a new day as we honor you and thank you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 God bless you, everyone. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to be asking the deacons to meet with me in about five minutes. I need to talk with the deacons.